Welcome back to KOAN Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM, The Joe Miller Show. We have on the line Matthew Boyle, investigative journalist working for Breitbart, has been with The Daily Caller, has broken a number of stories, Fast and Furious, he stayed on the Obama administration, Department of Justice, as we put it, like white on rice last segment. Uh, Matthew, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I kind of bait and switch here, we were talking about something else during the break, but you broke the story on Menendez, and I'd like you to mm-hmm. tell our listeners a little bit about what happened with that scandal and the relationship to Obama's Iran policy. Okay, so two and a half years ago, I had interviewed two prostitutes from the Dominican Republic who said that they slept with Senator Menendez for money and that he actually underpaid them. Um, and as part of that story was is, uh, it was the first time we really talked about it. and then over the follow-up stories and in the coming weeks and months afterwards, we explored the relationship that Senator Menendez has with a Democratic Party mega donor. His name is Dr. Salomon Melchin. Um, and he's an ophthalmologist from South Florida. Um, and uh, many times Senator Menendez has flown on, on Dr. Melgen's private jet down to the Dominican Republic, stayed at his private resort there in uh, what's called Casa de Campo. It's a really luxurious place in the, in the Dominican Republic uh, with a private airport and everything there. Um, and, and then in addition to that, um, uh, what we saw was is that there was, Many times that on Dr. Melgen's behalf, Senator Menendez used his official position in the U.S. Senate to intervene to help the doctor. So uh, one time, uh, as an ophthalmologist, he was coming under scrutiny from the uh, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services over his billing practices. And so Senator Menendez worked with actually Senator Reid, uh, uh, the just deposed Senate Majority Leader, now the Senate Minority Leader, um, to set up a meeting for uh, for Dr. Melgen at the um, uh, with the, the top officials at CMS to try to get them to back off their investigation of his billing practices. In addition to that, Senator Menendez was the chairman of a subcommittee that dealt with uh, 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 Latin American affairs uh, on the House Foreign Rela- on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, um, and called a hearing at which he attempted to pressure the State Department to approve a deal where Dr. Melgen was attempting to buy a port security contract in the Dominican Republic through one of his subsidiaries so that he could make millions, potentially billions of dollars of being the sole proprietor of a of a port security contract down there. Um, over the last two and a half years, Menendez and his and his allies in the, in the in the the, the the really the Clinton land, if you will, uh, he comes from the Clinton side of the Democratic Party, the establishment side of the Democratic Party, um, have uh, aggressively fought back against every bit of this. Even though the FBI and the Department of Justice, the, these are the career prosecutors and the career agents. These are not your political guys at the top, like you think of Eric Holder. Um, your career prosecutors and FBI agents have been investigating him, and they've been planning to move forward with criminal charges for uh, about two years now, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and um, now, as for the timing of the announcement that he's going to be indicted, uh, yeah, I mean, this this Department of Justice, is, as we've detailed uh, many times in at Breitbart, when I used to work at Daily Caller, did the same thing. Uh, is the most political in history. Um, so Eric Holder signing off on it. I don't think it's a surprise that it comes as Senator Menendez was stepping up on on Iran. But that being said, I do know that career prosecutors and career FBI agents, like the good guys, the law enforcement guys uh, at the Department of Justice, and they they do exist, uh, have been planning to move forward with criminal charges for some time. So, so I may, think may or may not be a Right. May or may not be a correlation between the indictment that. and his opposition to the president's Iran policy. Mm-hmm. I think it's fair to ask that question. I just don't. I don't see any evidence of it yet, and uh, I do know that the criminal charges have been coming for some time. So, with respect to the prostitutes, one of the things that I remember reading, and I think it was your article, it suggested they were minors. Is that right? Um, my the ones that I interviewed, no, that's not the case. But there were many more that had come out and spoken to um, uh, a left-wing organization in Washington called Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Now, it's a George Soros-funded group, and I think they didn't know who they were talking to, but they were trying to get them to investigate the senator 
um, at the time, and, and, uh, and they, they kind of tried to sweep it under the rug and everything. Uh, but they all those emails between these girls uh, and then somebody who was helping them get in contact with people in Washington uh, and, and, and crew, but also ABC News had come out on a website in early 2013, and those emails showed that, yeah, there was one girl who was 16 years old. So, so any and again, of the... I don't know if there if that's going to be a part of the indictment or or not. Um, right. A lot of the a lot of that stuff has been uh, difficult for the FBI to corroborate. Right. I was wondering if that was part of the mm-hmm. investigation or if it only dealt with the official corruption using his office to for personal benefit. Um, one of the uh, you know one of the things that concerns a lot of our listeners is that. You know, you end up with these powerful folk, you know, they get connected to these things like the Epstein case where there was a broad immunity agreement. Uh, It was so broad that uh, potential co-conspirators, anybody that was connected with it, were basically immunized. Uh, So that means, you know, uh, as I understand the agreement, even if it were later determined that Clinton did, in fact, you know, in exchange for money or or whatever, have sexual relations with a minor, the likelihood is the feds can go after them because of how broad that immunity agreement is. So there's a high degree of frustration. You know, we, we read about your story a couple of years ago with what happened with Menendez down in the Dominican Republic, and the rest of these stories came out, and yet he's still serving, apparently in good stead. I mean, there's been a number of articles about him that, you know, he's without limitation, seemingly, you know, still acting on behalf of his constituents. And I guess, what is it, New Jersey is where he's from? Yeah, New um, Jersey. And so, yeah, no, I mean, look, he was, for the last, in the last Congress, was one of the public faces and the leaders of the congressional effort in the U.S. Senate to push through the amnesty bill. He was one of the gang of eight. Um, him, uh, Chuck Schumer, Dick Durbin, um, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, all those guys were part of the um, the gang of eight together. And, um, uh, you know, he's very public very powerful U.S. senator. He was actually named Foreign Relations Committee chairman yeah. this last Congress at the beginning of it um, uh, after uh, John Kerry was appointed to replace uh, Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. I mean, he's a very Crazy. powerful Democratic U.S. senator. Crazy stuff upside down. We've got one minute left. Give us a sneak peek on what's going on with the McCain race down in Arizona. So uh, I can confirm, uh, we'll have a story on this on Breitbart in the coming days, but I can confirm that there are two potential primary challengers for Senator John McCain. You're going to hear it here first. I can confirm that Congressman Matt Salmon is considering running against him. And then also, it's been out there before, but we'll have a big interview with her. Uh, State Senator Kelly Ward uh, from uh, from, uh, the northern part of the state is also looking at a run against Senator McCain. So um, it will get very, very interesting down there as the GOP establishment scrambles to try to save their public face. Well, obviously, McCain's been working and already trying to turn out the convention attendees to be establishment from Tea Party. We'll see what happens. Matthew, really appreciate your insights. Keep up the good work. Keep asking the tough questions. We need to have people putting their feet to the fire. You're one who's doing it. We'll love to have Thanks you back. Thanks so much, Joe. All right, thank you. Stay with us. We have another great guest, Bethany Blakely. News summary at the top of the hour. The Joe Miller Show, back with you in a few minutes. Stay with us.